The fourth installment of Russell Dudeman's X-Men Costumes Throughout the Years series has been released, and this time Storm is the cover girl. Officially, this cover is the variant for Sword Number 8, and it's currently scheduled to hit store shelves in September. Some of Russell's previous covers in this series were for Jean Grey, Rogue, and Psylocke, and they were all fantastic. I've already done a ranking of my favorite looks in the Psylocke one, so if you haven't checked out that video, then be sure to give it a watch. I had a sneaking suspicion that Storm would be coming next, so I wanted to wait and rank her costumes before going back in time and doing Jean and Rogue's. I was really looking forward to this cover because just like Psylocke, Storm is one of my all-time favorite X-Men, and she has always had a great array of costumes, most of which I totally love. Now, if we can just get Dazzler onto the next cover, then these three will be like a complete set for me. Storm was actually my very first favorite X character, if memory serves me right. I grew up on the animated series, so my initial exposure to the X world was limited to the characters featured in that show, and Storm just totally captivated me. I did get into the comic books pretty quickly as well, and I was just as drawn to Storm in print as I was in TV, except now I was able to see that she was so much more than just like dramatic speeches and big bountiful hair. I was like 7 or something when my X-Men mania began, and I was actively seeking out all the licensed merchandise that I could, like the X-Men pogs and the sticker albums and the picture books, and it was always just like striking gold for me when Storm was a featured character in any of them. One memory that I distinctly have is being at the mall with my mom and I was reading an X-Men trivia book and one of the little jokes inside asked, what is the calmest part of Storm? And the answer of course was like the eye of the storm, but I was too young to really know what that meant so I didn't really get it and I think I just decided to go with like the eye of the storm being the name of that red brooch that she wears to clasp her cape. I mean, that's definitely not canon or anything, but for a desperate seven-year-old trying to understand a pun, I think it did a pretty good job of rationalizing it. Storm has had some awesome costumes over the years, and as I said, I liked pretty much all of them. This ranking is just an order of personal preferences, so it may or may not match your own. It probably won't, but be sure to let me know where you think they rank in your own personal list in the comments below. I count 15 costumes on this cover, so let's get right into it. Here is my ranking of Storm's costumes from my least favorite to my most favorite. Number 15, Standard X Uniform. Anytime this costume shows up in any of these covers, it's never going to be ranked highly by me. Because it is just a standard X uniform, there's no individuality or personality in it. A big part of what makes Storm's costuming so iconic is that her threads usually embody aspects of her personality or like whatever phase she's currently going through. Storm wore this costume at least twice from what I can remember. There was a super brief stint in it between costumes of like Extreme X-Men and her XSE costume, but probably the most memorable time she spent wearing it was when pretty much every other X character was wearing it too and they were off lollygagging in space. Storm had some really wicked panels while she was wearing this costume, so in that way I have fond memories of it, but I mean nothing about this scream Storm. If anything, the most interesting part of this outfit was her haircut. I actually totally don't mind her with the super short pixie kind of cut. She wore this around the same time that she was being genetically modified in Genosha, and she had to grow back her hair from scratch. And even though Storm's hair certainly goes through it over the years, I certainly can't say that I ever mind it when she's wearing a short little do like this. Overall, this costume is just not the one for Storm, so even though it pops up every now and again, I'm very happy for her to keep it in the closet. Number 14, Ultimate Storm. So I'll start this one off with a little caveat. I admittedly did not read much of the Ultimate Universe. Even though I really liked the edict of the dead stay dead, which I think was like the big selling point of this bolder, more aggressive Marvel alternate universe, there are only so many alternate universes I can handle, and Ultimate just would have like pushed my bank account over the limit. 
honestly, as comic book collectors, we have to draw the line somewhere, otherwise we'll just go broke. I'm not a big fan of ongoing alternate reality series anyway. I find that they inevitably end and that anything that happens within them never really affects the prime 616 reality anyway, so it just feels like a lot of investment for a little payoff in the long run. I know that's not always the case, and that popular characters like Miles Morales did spawn out of a place like the Ultimate Universe, but still, I gave 2099 my attention during its heyday, and look what happened there. So anyway, with all of that out in the open, I can't really speak too much about this costume in particular, or how it related to the Ultimate Storm's character. It looks a bit standard issue to me, just like how the previous one did. So even though this one has like a smidge more personality than the blue and yellow, I don't know. It's just really not doing it for me either. Storm to me is not someone who wears clothing that just anyone else can also wear. She's far too distinctive a character to be asked to blend in and conform this way. So to see her dressed in any sort of like team uniform is really just wasteful and bleh to me. Number 13, Revolution Storm. The Revolution era was Chris Claremont's grand return to writing the X-Books after like a decade away from them. Anticipation was high, but execution was not very well received, and this whole era didn't actually last that long. I am totally guilty of being one of the fans who dropped X-Men for a while during this period of time, and I hate to point the finger of blame, but it was definitely Revolution that made me do it. I just really hated the six month gap and how everything was kind of like rebooted without explanation, and I didn't want to waste my weekly allowance money on a book that I just wasn't interested in anymore. I think that Revolution has aged a bit better than some of the other oddball stories have though, and in hindsight, the loftiness of Revolution wasn't really as bad as we made it out to be back then, so it was worth it for me to eventually go back and fill in those blank spots by reading the issues that I had unceremoniously skipped over back in the day. Storm's Revolution costume wasn't bad at all, but it was a little bit too focused on being, like, ornate or something for my tastes. There are a bunch of metallic circlets on her arms and chest and legs that just end up looking like those recycled plastic ring holders, and it takes away from, like, the overall aesthetic of this costume. I think it's a pretty costume, but it's also just like a lot of purple, which isn't totally foreign territory for Storm to wear, but this hue in particular just feels really overpowering to my senses. I think the purple is meant to mirror her like regal side, since purple is often associated with royalty and Storm has that goddessness about her, but I think it went overboard, and too much of a good thing isn't always a great thing, and I think that's the case with this particular outfit. Number 12, Extreme Storm. Storm was the leader of the Extreme X-Men team, and this was the team that she originally formed to hunt down all 13 volumes of Destiny's prophetic diaries. That MO really only lasted them for so long, and the Extreme team would go on to do like a weird assortment of other things, such as dealing with alien attacks and infiltrating a mutant fight club. Storm was pretty badass during her time in the Extreme X-Men, and while I don't think that series was really like groundbreaking or anything, and I don't care to revisit it too often, it was still a good series to further demonstrate Storm as a leader and show how she very much does what she thinks is the right thing to do, regardless of how it sits with Xavier or the overall dream. In terms of this outfit, I think she looks very powerful in it. It's definitely one of her more like boss lady costumes, and I think it commands attention, but I'm not convinced that it's that great. I like the overall shape and design, but that red is just so overpowering. Just like the purple one before, this red cape is just like way too much for me. It kind of makes my eyes want to bleed. 
I don't really think that red is Storm's color, and if it is, then it's best used just as like a pop of flavor, like in the gem that she clasps her cape with. That feels like the right level of red for her. But this specific shade of red as like the full undertone of a giant billowing cape is just a lot to take in. I enjoy pretty much everything else about the costume though, even if it is, again, one of her more like ornate feeling ones. And I wouldn't mind seeing this redesigned, but perhaps with a little less red. Number 11, Astonishing Storm. This is the costume that Storm wore during her time when she joined the Astonishing X-Men team. She didn't really feel like a full-time member of the X-Squad to me during this time. She was freshly crowned as Queen of Wakanda and was pretty busy with her hubby the Black Panther, so any X responsibilities always seemed like an afterthought. She does always make time for her mutant family though, so she joined up with Psych and the crew to help them with ghost boxes and outer space stuff, which is really what this team always felt like it was doing. This is probably one of Storm's sexiest costumes, in my opinion. Depending on the depiction, it can certainly be considered her at her most scantily clad, and the first time I saw it, I actually thought, whoa, this does not feel very Storm. Nudity and Storm certainly do go hand in hand though, and she iconically dismissed this western culture social decorum of covering our bodies with fabrics from the very first moment that she joined the X-Men. In her early days, she was very much known to rip off her clothes the moment she got back to the mansion and just exist within the nature of her own natural beauty. There are lots of panels of her where she's just covered by her hair or like the wind or some other element, and that feels like an extremely natural version of Storm, but here where she's like almost naked but not quite naked but making it happen in like a sexy way, just feels like it's not exactly in the realm of what Storm uses clothes for. Clothes are very functional for her, and even though she has very much acclimated to the custom of wearing them, something about the way this costume is designed just feels like it's here to cater to the male fantasy as opposed to serve Storm as a character. And hey, I'm just as guilty for fanboying the lesser dressed female heroes, like obviously Psylocke, but I don't know, something about this just felt very unstormed to me. I mean, yeah, a lot of Storm's costumes are sexy or revealing in some way, but this just felt like it was edging on too much. Now, all that said, this costume did have time to grow on me, and I don't so much mind it anymore. It's super extra in its way, and every time I see those sleeves, I can't help but think that she picked them up cheap at like Hot Topic or something. So even though I don't think all of the elements mesh that well together, and it's a bit too revealing even for Storm, I don't really mind it as much as I used to, and it was interesting seeing Storm dressed all in white when we are used to seeing her in darker colors throughout most of her other costuming journeys. Number 10, XSE. All the costumes from this point on I do really, really enjoy. Starting with this one. This was the one that Storm started wearing after she ditched the Extreme team and helped form the XSE, the Extreme Sanctions Executive. Ugh, Marvel was really scraping for the acronyms here. Basically, the XSE was formed to act as like a fully UN-backed team of mutants who could fight threats internationally without worrying about any kind of governmental repercussions. They did things like fight the Fury in England and helped out in the Savage Land and made sure the Hellfire Club was operating under its best behavior. In my opinion, the XSE as a concept was never really the backbone of any of the stories, and it really just felt like they were a bunch of X-Men doing normal X-Men things, which I think is justifiable since the entire concept of the XSE just sort of fizzled away without much fanfare once M-Day struck. But I did really enjoy Storm's portrayal during this era. It really didn't feel like any new grounds for her, it was just Storm being a leader as usual, but sometimes that's all I need in order to enjoy a nice, fun Storm story. The costume that Storm wore during this period it feels like it was the inspiration to becoming what ended up being one of her longest standing costumes. 
A version of it originally debuted back around the 12 storyline, but it was in and out fairly quickly, so I'm happy that they brought this one back out for the XSE and beyond. It has had several minor tweaks to it over the years, mostly changing up the colors on the trim of the cape and shortening the bodysuit and adding in some boots, but I definitely say that a variation of this is her go-to costume whenever she's in a pinch. It basically feels like a modernized, reworked version of her original costume, headdress and all, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. I really like this look on her, and I think the lightning crackle and the little, like, lightning bolt accessories are all really nice touches. Number 9, Gold Leader. Is there really any other more iconic outfit for Storm than this one? Storm wore this during the early 90s when the X-Men were divided into blue and gold teams. While Cyclops led the blue team, Storm was the head honcho of the gold team. This is probably the outfit that most casual fans would associate with Storm, specifically because it was also the outfit that she wore during X-Men the Animated Series. There has been some controversy over exactly what color this outfit really is, if it's white like the TV show portrayed it to be, or if it's actually all black and then these white elements that we see are just highlights reflecting off of it. But I think it's fine for fans to just go with whatever color they want it to be, and for me, it is most definitely white. Even though this is probably considered to be Storm's most memorable costume, it's not anywhere near my favorite. I like it, but part of me is like, do I only like it because of the nostalgia, or is it actually a good costume? It kind of looks like the frumpiest of her costumes when it's stacked up against all the other ones, but it is also quintessential Storm of the 90s. She very much exuded those classic traits of her being the goddessy, speechy powerhouse of the team, and part of her almost feels like she was unapproachable in some way. Not because of like a hoity attitude, but just because it would feel like we aren't worthy to be in her presence or something. The costume is a really great depiction of who Storm was as a character back then, but it's also kind of dated, and ultimately kind of stuffy. My favorite aspect of it is, and always has been, that hooped cape of hers. And I love the big hair and the X badges, even though I think the X badges were only ever used as communicators on the TV show and not in the comics. Which is a shame, because I always liked when Storm pressed on her giant X badge to call Cyclops. Number 8, Krakoa. This is the costume that Storm is currently wearing on Krakoa. She has primarily been a member of Kate Pride's Marauders during this Hickman era, though she has also played a prominent role in the X of Swords crossover and is stated to have some big things coming up after the Hellfire Gala, all of which I theorize in one of my recent Storm videos, so be sure to check that out if you're curious. I really like this costume on Storm. To me, it's like a consolidated fighting uniform of a lot of her former looks. The colors are all exactly what you expect from a Storm color palette, but it's also more functional than a lot of her other ones in that it's like a full-length bodysuit as opposed to being just skimpy fabric or a leotard. Storm is impervious to temperature changes, so it's not like she ever needs full body coverage, but it just feels like a more suitable look for her when she's charging into battle wearing this versus wearing something like a fancy bathing suit. My favorite aspect of this storm is actually her hair. I love how much body it has. Even when she wears it in a ponytail, it looks thick and full and like it's missing a crown. Even though I like all of the elements of this costume, I almost wonder if it's playing it too safe for this new Krakoa era. Like, I do think that it's really great, but I wonder if there's a way to elevate it above just being a bunch of echoes of her previous costumes. I see a lot of what I've already seen from Storm in this costume, and I like all those things, which is probably why I like this costume too, but it doesn't totally excite me as like taking her in a brand new direction or anything. But still, it's a great functional looking outfit, and I think that she looks just as powerful in it as ever. Number 7, Original Storm. From the newest to the oldest. This is the costume that Storm wore when she was first introduced and recruited into joining Xavier's X-Men. She debuted in Giant Size X-Men, and there's a very memorable splash page of all the new X-Men in their threads for the first time, and I love looking at the wonder and awe in Storm's face as she examines her new costume. 
Even though she's not one to get down with clothing, she admits as to how fantastic the fabrics feel on her body, and so she's willing to make an exception here. If the white gold leader costume is quintessential storm of the 90s, then this is definitely a quintessential storm of the 70s. Everything about it really sums up who Storm was in her life at this point. She had just been whisked away from Kenya where she was being worshipped as a goddess, and now here she is, a crime-fighting mutant who basically still looks like a goddess. I know I talked about how skimpy Storm costumes aren't always my favorite ones, but I mean come on, this is bare necessity Storm in her most basic stormy outfit that would go on to influence almost every single costume that she's worn since. The headdress is a staple, as is the red gem, and the cape, and the colors, and even the general design of it is all exactly who Storm is when you boil it all down, and I just think this costume is wonderful. Number 6, Black Lightning. Alright, now we're getting into some of the nitty gritty stuff that I really enjoy. As I said, I already like most of Storm's costumes, but these next ones are definitely my all time favorites, starting with this one. Storm mostly wore this all black costume during the time the team was stationed in the Australian Outback, and then again for a little while after X Factor rejoined the crew just before dividing into blue and gold teams. I always look at this costume as a competitor to her white gold leader uniform. They are both so similar yet so different at the same time. A lot of the elements are the same, like the length and the fact that there's a cape and everything and just the overall vibe of them, but when it comes down to it, I just think that this black one really embodies Storm a lot better than the white one ever did. Lightning motifs are a pretty easy go-to for Storm's costuming designs, and so even though it's a bit on the nose to have a giant lightning bolt spread across her chest, I still really like it. It's simple enough for me since pretty much the entire rest of the outfit is just a solid black, so it really pops and it lets you know just how electrifying Storm can really be. This was the outfit that Storm wore shortly after regaining her powers, and I think it's a great costume to have worn, sort of like in honor of that. I loved when her hair was long but the sides were shaven, and it really felt like Storm was recapturing the essence of that like holier-than-thou goddessness without totally doing away with the new edginess that the 80s also gave her. Storm in this outfit is also one of my very first X-Men action figures, if not the first X-Men action figure that I ever owned, so that alone gives this costume a very special place in my heart. For some reason, I feel like this costume doesn't get as much love as the white one does, mostly because it's not in nearly as many other medias as that one is, and I think that's a true shame because though they are similar, this black lightning costume is far more superior than that white costume could ever hope to be. Number 5, Midriff Storm. Oh my god, the exposed midriff costume. This is the costume that Storm wore right around the Onslaught storyline of the 90s, and she kept it through Operation Zero Tolerance pretty much up until the 12. It was part of like a Storm rebranding of sorts. The formal gold and blue teams were pretty much dissolved, and I think this was Marvel's way of breathing some new hip life into her. At its core, this is a very basic costume. It's like just a pair of pants with pretty much just a halter top, but man, do I ever love it. First of all, it's a total departure from what Storm usually wears. It's way more of like an athletic, sporty spice kind of look versus something stuffy like a bodysuit and a billowing cape. I mean, this costume does have a cape as well, but instead of being like a giant blanket hanging off of her back, it's more like a shoulder shrug that just kind of looks like the ends of some really long scarves or something. I really love the way that they just fall off of her shoulders, and I especially love that her shoulders are exposed in like a peekaboo way. In fact, I love all the areas that are just cut out exposing her skin. This is a way to keep a uniform sexy without making it too smutty. I think she looks strong and what would have been very current for the 90s. Even though the 90s aesthetic of it is pretty pared back since that aesthetic would have been waning by the time this design came around, I still like the nods to the 90s-isms like the gauntlets and the heavy duty boots. 
They don't really make a ton of sense in this costume from a practical standpoint. She's looking sleek and aerodynamic, and then suddenly she's got these huge gloves and shoes weighing her down. But they do add that element of superheroism to the costume, and that's what I like about them. I mean, all of the costume is really great for me, but my most favorite part is her hair. I love those two long strands in the front. I think they make her look extremely youthful and fun and like she's ready to jumpstart a new trend of some sort. Instead of getting the Rachel, everyone will be asking their hairdressers for the Aurora. I don't think that she's ever revisited this hairdo again, and I mean, maybe it doesn't quite have the same, like, time-testedness as, say, her mohawk does, but it certainly is a look that I was into while she did have it. I really like the color variations we got out of this outfit, too. I've said it before that I don't really think that purple is one of Storm's strongest colors, and even though this outfit is mostly all purple, she did wear a black version of it for a while, and I think that the black version actually looks way better than the purple. This costume is actually what she wore in one of my very favorite Storm stories of all time, X-Men number 60 and 61, where we learn that the red gem that she keeps clasped on her cape is actually the gem where the external Kandra transferred part of her life essence into for safekeeping. In that issue, Storm fights with both Kandra and the Shadow King, and to me, it just feels like the pinnacle of badassery Storm in this costume. I think this was just a really fresh look for Storm overall. It made her feel more down-to-earth and approachable, and less like an untouchable goddess. I like when Storm has a sense of humor, and when she reminds us that she is actually a human too, and I think that she was really at one of her most relatable moments when she was wearing this costume. Number 4, Mohawk Punk. Storm's Rebel Years is a pretty divisive era amongst Storm fans. On the one hand, some people say it was the best thing that ever happened to her character because it really rounded her out and gave her the most dimension and most depth that any other X character had ever really had up to this point. But on the other hand, some people say that it utterly destroyed the essence of who Storm was as a serene, almost like homeopathic character by throwing her into an edgy role that made her look like a caricature than of a true representation of who she really is. I obviously side with the opinion that this was an amazing time of Storm's life, otherwise I wouldn't have rated this costume so highly. Storm developed this aggressive, edgy fashion moment as a reflection of changes that were going on inside of her. She was the new leader of the X-Men, and it had inadvertently put her at odds with herself. A core part of her being was that she always valued the sanctity of life, but a ruthless side of herself was showing itself more and more, and while it scared her a little bit, she also kind of liked it. And after a little nudging from Yukio, she decided to embrace it, and voila, Punk Storm was born. It was such a drastic departure from everything that we knew about Storm as a character at this point, and I can totally see how it could be jarring for fans, but for me, it made total sense given the road that her character was on, and I really stand by the opinion that this is where Storm was her most interesting, and where a lot of the most important things that would go on to influence her character happened to her. Probably the most infamous thing that happened to her during these punk years was that she lost her powers. Forge had created a gun for the government that was meant to be used on some aliens, but the government saw fit to use it on mutants instead, and blammo, Storm was the guinea pig. Storm's powerlessness mixed with these internal, emotional conflicts just really gave way to some awesome, deep, personal moments for her, and so that's why this era of Storm lives so fondly in my heart. But also, if we're just looking aesthetically, I think this punk look rocks. I love the Mohawk, especially since Storm is traditionally not a character who you would ever have suspected to have worn one, but the way they wove this storyline for her, it all just felt so natural and like it wasn't forced on her whatsoever. I think that Storm has great taste no matter the runway, and everything that she wore during her punk phase is really beautiful in that punky alternative way really the accessories that pull the whole look together, because otherwise it's really just a black romper, but paired with the choker and the vest and the armband and the gloves and the belts, it really just makes her look pretty damn cool. 
As I said, either you love it or you hate it, and I, for one, adore it. Number three, Age of Apocalypse. When I think of the Age of Apocalypse, Storm is not really a prominent character that comes to mind. She was definitely there, but she certainly wasn't the focus of this storyline, and really, nor should she have been. She was kind of a background player for the most part, and though she had some really cool moments, she was mostly just a soldier in the war and not really a major plot point. Even with me saying all of that, I gotta admit, I absolutely loved her costume during this time. It's totally different from anything we've seen her in before, and I think they really nailed the design in terms of who the storm of this reality was. There aren't any goddess motifs here, and honestly, it feels kind of like an homage to a Mortal Kombat character or something. But this is who Storm was in the AOA, a foot soldier for the X-Men, more or less, and so there wouldn't be anything too resplendent or exuberant about her outfit, and yet still, I really like it. I like how downplayed it is, and I really like the black and white color scheme and the random geometric shapes that are all over it. I think her short hair was the right call to make here, and I love that black tattoo over her eye. The AOA is a dystopian reality, and this feels very much like a dystopian costume that's specific to Storm. It's not full of like steampunk junk or any other typical mean futuristic stuff. It kind of has an aesthetic as though it was put together using a bunch of rags and cloths, and it almost feels like she might never have gotten out of her street urchin phase in this reality, and that that might have influenced this costume. This costume really wins for me because I do think that Storm was a strong player in the Age of Apocalypse, even if she wasn't always in the spotlight. And when I think back to these books, she was always a highlight for me anytime she showed up. Number two, Asgard Storm. I think this Asgard costume is so breathtaking. I know it's not really a real costume of hers, but it's here on the cover and so it's totally fair game for my ranking. She only ever wore this like less than a handful of times and only when she was wielding Stormcaster, which was the enchanted hammer that Loki made for her back during the Asgardian Wars, but still, I love it. I kind of dissed the revolution and extreme costumes for being too ornate, and yet here I am, placing what is probably considered the most ornate of all her costumes here as my number two favorite. But I can't help it. It's just so beautiful. And it succeeds where the other two fail for me. If you're going to be ornate, then go there and be ornate. Everything about this costume is so extra, but it's extra with a point of view, and I totally know what it's telling me about itself, so I'm not confused by any of the accoutrement or déclotage. I think she looks extremely powerful in this, and objectively speaking, it's probably the most powerful of all her costumes anyway. Stormcaster really does a number on her mind whenever she wields it, and she's prone to going overboard with the power, but that's also part of the appeal here for me. I actually would love to see this version of Storm face off against the Asgard version of Wonder Woman from the DC Comics. There's a very brief moment during Marvel vs. DC where Wonder Woman picks up Thor's hammer and she's transformed into an Asgardian warrior, but she relinquishes the power like right before she engages Storm in battle because Diana is honest and knows that that wouldn't have been a fair fight. But if Storm had Stormcaster, just think of how epic that battle would have been. I am a big fan of any time Storm interacts with her as Guardian self, and even though it only happens few and far between, it's always a treat for me to see this costume pop up when it does, and I would love for her to spend an extended period of time wearing it. Number one, X-Force. I don't think that this is a very popular costume choice to be a number one favorite, but I absolutely love it. It's what she wore during her time in Uncanny X-Force with like Psylocke and Spiral, and she kept it across a few other titles as well, like in the X-Men All Girl series. I just think this is such a flattering costume for her. I think it's really sexy without trying too hard to be sexy, and I think it marries a lot of her old styles together into one. 
Since I was a fan of the original Mohawk Storm, I was also a fan of when they brought it back, and I think this modern interpretation really nailed who Storm was. She didn't need to go down the full-on rebel road again by wearing, like, leathers and spikes. She had already done that before, so it would have been regressive of her to do it again. Instead, I think she channeled the attitude that she possessed around that era and put it together with everything else that had happened to her since then to come up with this very consolidated costume that stays true to who she is while also homaging who she was. It's the most fulfilling of all her costumes to me because it's not like it's one or the other the way most of her other costumes are. With those, it's like she's either a rebel, or she's a goddess, or she's an X-Man. What I liked about this is that she's very clearly all of those things within this one costume without having to commit to any specific one. And really, that's who Storm is at her core. She's a complex woman with a varied history of attitudes and moods and beliefs and actions, and so why should she commit to any one specific style in her costume design? I think this costume is both edgy and gorgeous without trying too hard to be either one, and so for that reason, I give this costume my highest honor of being my absolute favorite Storm costume of all time. And that's it! Thanks for tuning in and following along with my little Storm countdown. I love Storm and I love her costumes, so please let me know what your favorite Storm costumes are, and also let me know what Storm costumes you do not like, because that is just as important of information. If you liked this video, be sure to check around my channel for other X-Men videos, like reviews and rumors, and also feel free to follow me on social media for an assortment of other X content. Thanks again for stopping by today, and be sure to come back soon for more great X-Mentations.